Hi submarine friends. This right here is one of my smaller LED lights that I make. I take a regular LED light bar and I strip out the LED circuit board with LEDs on it and I turn it into a submarine light that can go any depth you want. So I've been making them with hard acrylic tubes but I've upgraded now to a soft tube. So I'm gonna show you how I do this upgrade. Okay, you can see here I have the light completely disassembled. This is the old acrylic tube. We won't be using that anymore. Uh, that obvi this obviously is the LED light bar. This is the end cap. Now the way that this light used to work is this bellow, I call it, was on the end right here of the acrylic tube. This right here could compress and expand and that's what allows it to go so deep into the water. We are eliminating this. This will no longer be. We're going to reuse the high pressure connector, the uh, electric wire, of course. So the other thing, this is a heavy duty piece of plastic. It's a little over an inch thick. It's actually plastic pipe from a water system that I got a bunch of scraps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw it in the oven at 300 degrees and I'm going to flatten it out a bit. And when I do that, it actually expands so it becomes thicker. So that's what I'm going to make new the, en the new end caps with. So here I'm just drilling out the chunks out of the square pieces. I actually decided not to put it in the oven because it's actually thick enough the way it is. Yes, I know it's a three jaw chuck and it should be a four jaw chuck, but the darn thing weighs about 80 pounds and my back is sore. Okay, so I got the piece cut out. So now I'm just going to turn this into a smooth cylinder. This stuff machine's real nice and easy, of course. I don't want to take too much off because I don't want to affect the thickness. The thickness is what I need. So I've got it uh, 50 thou away from being perfect. So it's actually going to be 2 inches plus 10 thou. That's what fits my vinyl tubing. But whatever vinyl tubing you buy, obviously you would size it to that. So we'll just take this last half here. It's really stringy stuff to machine. But the machine's nice, so no complaints. Okay, hopefully you can see this. So what I did is I hollowed out the end of this. This is going to be the plug that is going to go in the end of the vinyl tube. So I machined a couple of grooves in here so that the epoxy that I pour in here to seal the wires has something to grip onto. So now I just have to drill a couple of holes for the bolts to go through. Now I thread the bolts so that they don't leak and I actually drill them so that they're smaller than the 730 seconds, one size smaller just so it's extra tight and the thing is it's uh, plastic so it really doesn't matter okay so then we just get a tap so now I'm just going to tap these from the back side okay so I removed the old cord with the high pressure plug connector it was attached to this now it's not so I've crimped on some new ends you can see here there's no need to shrink tube them or anything because it's all encapsulated in epoxy. So now all I have to do is run a couple of bolts through there to attach this to. Okay, well you can see how easy this whole process is. So I've got this, these two wires are now underneath those bolts. So the power travels through this and then I connect my leads right here to the inside, positive and negative. So now I'm going to epoxy fill this, let it sit for 24 hours, and then it's ready to install. Okay, so I mixed up the epoxy. It's a two-part epoxy casting resin, and I'm just gonna pour it in. This stuff is terrific. It encapsulates wires really nicely. I've had nothing but good luck with this stuff. Better than the five-minute epoxy. That stuff is so stiff. But this is nice and runny. It's really easy to work with. Boy, I've been really lucky with my measurements. Okay, so now we just let that guy sit and cure and it'll grab the grooves that are in there and we'll be ready to put it together. So this is the piece after it's been epoxy filled. You can actually see the bolts with the wires, etc. inside. You can see I've machined an O-ring groove and I've left the O-ring proud. So the groove is not as deep as it would be if it was metal because I want it to sink right into the vinyl tubing. So now I just connect these wires to the board. So this here is the vinyl tube that the light is gonna go in. It's already been cut and I've already tested it out. I could clean that up a bit more. So all we do is we bolt on the positive and negative terminals here. Okay, so the wires are connected. I actually just took it over to the submarine, plugged it in, 
and turned it on to make sure I had the polarity correct because there's no way of knowing without testing it. So now I just slide it in. Now you'll notice that the LED board in this case is mounted to a piece of puck board that I had laying around. So that's the backer to keep this rigid. This one I used wood and I got a little pushback on that but I'm pretty happy with the wood. So here we go, we just slide it in. Now I've machined it so that this is uh, tight so it'll take a little effort to push in and the o-ring like I said is a little bit proud so it's going to take a little effort to push through there we go and we're in now the other end it's the same as this end it's but it's a solid plug o-ring groove again and it's got an oil fill plug in the end so what I like to do I just fill it before I put the end plug on good old canola oil here I find this oil works just fine so I'm near the top then I'm going to just push the plug on and of course it's a little bit of an effort to get past that o-ring there we go so I've actually overfilled it a little it's okay that's what the shop rag is for slip the clamp on these are just some old used clamps i've got laying around now here's the neat part about this because it's a vinyl tube what i can do i can squeeze the body force the oil out that creates a situation where it's trying to suck back in what that does is it gives room for the oil to expand so I continue squeezing it. So now it's actually under vacuum inside, so to speak. So now when the oil wants to expand, it can. Now it's ready to make some brackets. So one thing I should mention about these, if you don't happen to have a nice big lathe like I have, go to the hardware store and buy some plumbing caps. I'm pretty sure, I can't guarantee it, but I'm pretty sure that a two inch, or sorry, a one and a half inch ABS pipe cap will fit right inside this tubing. I would get some plumbing caps, measure them, and then size the tubing to the caps. You don't have to have a lathe to do this. You can do this with anything you can imagine that'll plug that hole. So in conclusion, I really, really like this idea. It's Carl Stanley's idea. I just stole it. So I like, I like what I did with the rigid tube, but this is even better. Putting the vinyl tube on is just, I think, the way to go. So if you have an acrylic tube already, you might consider doing this. Otherwise, if you're building from scratch, I think this is the way to go. Ciao for now.